So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here about non-parametric statistics because you can always look them up, um, but I do at least want to touch on them so that you have some familiarity with what these tests are, especially if you read about them in a paper, you know, you have some idea of what's going on. Um, now, non-parametric statistics are more robust than all the statistics that we've gone through so far. And what I mean when I say more robust is, I mentioned a few times that there are certain assumptions that are embedded in all of the parametric statistics, like t-tests and ANOVAs. For example, one of the assumptions is that you're pulling scores from a normal distribution. However, if for some reason your distribution is sufficiently non-normal, the, the statistics themselves don't hold up so well. So you would have to use a non-parametric statistic. Another um, instance when you're often going to use non-parametric statistics is if your dependent variable is not measurable on an interval scale. So for example, if all you had were yes-no responses and you didn't have something like a 1 to 7 scale, you would have to use non-parametric statistics because you don't have your dependent variable on at least an interval scale. So in order to run parametrics, your dependent variable should be on an interval scale or a ratio scale, but if you have it on an ordinal scale or a nominal scale, you're going to have to also use non-parametric statistics. So in this sense, they're more robust. They can, they can deal with more cases of scenarios here than the parametrics can, which require a couple um, stringent assumptions as well as requiring that your dependent variables at least on an interval scale, which is not always possible to measure. Um, importantly, and I think all that you really need to take away from this, is that there are non-parametric analogs of all the previous tests that we've gone over, except for mixed model ANOVAs. So there are non-parametric analogs of single sample t-tests, there's non-parametric analogs of independent samples t-tests, there's, there's non-parametric analogs of one-way ANOVA, factorial ANOVA between subjects, factorial ANOVA between, uh, within subjects. The one thing you can't do is uh, mix model ANOVA. Um, I know of no non-parametric tests that can actually do the same thing. Or it's an ANOVA with multiple independent variables, some of which are between subjects and some of which are within subjects. So essentially what you want to do when you're, when you're forced to use non-parametric statistics or you choose to use non-parametric statistics is think about if I were to use parametric statistics, which one would I choose? Would I be running an independent samples t-test, a factorial ANOVA, or what specific test would I be using? And then you can just look up in a book or online, what's the non-parametric analog? And once you figure that out, it's pretty much straightforward from there. However, one thing to keep in mind with non-parametric statistics is, while they are more robust, you also lose substantial power. And one way of thinking about this is just that you're losing information, right? So in essence, if you're taking a variable, for example, that's measured on a 1 to 7 scale, so it's on an interval scale, right? You could dichotomize that and make it high versus low. However, if you think about what's going to happen there, 5, 6, 7 are all going to be collapsed into one category, which is high, and 1, 2, 3 are all going to be collapsed into one category, which is low, right? So in that sense, you've lost some information. You've lost some of the sort of fineness of the measurement that you had. So... Because of that, you're going to lose power, right? The more information that you're throwing away or the more information that you don't actually have access to or you never measured in the first place, you're losing power. In addition, it's a compromise for the robustness of the statistics if the, normal, if the assumption of normality is violated. So what makes them robust is related to um, roughly how they're going to lose their power. So they lose their power because they don't require these specific assumptions and they're more general, but at the same time, in order to be more general, by definition, they have to have less power. So when you can avoid it, you would rather not have to use non-parametric statistics, which is a really important thing to keep in mind when you're doing experimental design. So when you design a questionnaire, for example, you're going to want people to rate things on a 1 to 7 scale rather than just say, for example, agree or disagree. Because then, at the end of the experiment, you can use your parametric statistics, which are much more powerful. Then, and you wouldn't be forced into using the non-parametric statistics where it's harder to pull out an effect if there is one. Um, so I'll just name a couple of them here. You've got chi-square, Mann-Whitney test, kruskal wallace you can do sign tests, Wilcoxon, or Friedman tests. So each one of those has an analog with one of the, the parametric statistics, and you just need to look it up and figure out which one. But in case you encounter any of those names in any of the papers that you're reading, you can just know that those are non-parametric statistics and they're nothing sort of exotic. They're just a little bit different way of doing things.